you know, I believe that Winter's Helm doesn't get a lot of love for what he can do. Getting a 30% debuff on a group of enemies is huge considering how you can chain this back to back with the right enemies. Did you also know that combining this with a fast set of command and conditional finality can allow you to auto reload conditional finality back to back as well? Well, I didn't either, but today's build not only does that, but also vastly allows you to debuff pretty much everything and anything all you like. And all you need here is Fair Winter's Helm and conditional finality. If you enjoy maximizing carnage around you, but also want to build that can be useful with dealing with higher tier enemies as well, then this prismatic build is not only going to give you the best route around this, but also grant you an option to do this in the most efficient manner available. Let's not do daddy around and make a start. A start with the exotic of the build, our aim is to maximize Fair Winter's debuff effect as much as possible via our charge mini, but also provide the build that is viable to use in the end game with safety included. Achieving a goal is quite easy, as long as you have unlocked the additional fragments I will mention later, while Zotting's weapons do have some flexibility built into them. A Fair Winter's Helm exotic trait, Warlord's End, states, Powered melee final blows or finishers creates a burst of energy that weaken nearby targets. A final blows on more powerful targets increases the radius and length of the weaken effect. Uh, this is a 30% debuff with a max time limit of 20 seconds and a 25 meter radius. Uh, using this in a small confined room against a elite or mini boss is what will allow you to shut down a fully packed room with little effort via finishers or melee. If you play your cards right, you can repeat this effect as many times as you like as long as the enemies are available to do so. Combining this with conditional finality is next play here with the special exotic trait, Split Decision, which states, a dual barrel split into stasis and solar damage. The perfect exotic to pair when using Fair Winters, as they both share a common trend of stopping enemies' movements. Ideally, using this against bigger enemies is where it will come in handy the most, as this will benefit Fair Winters' helm with triggering this effect for longer and easier. Of course, this is not an easy weapon to get for most players, so I would advise any chill clip fusion rifle as an alternative that doesn't steer too far from the original build, but still gives room to use another exotic of your choosing. For aspects and fragments, we do have the following. A feed of void where getting any ability kill grants devour. Devour improves self-healing and also grants grenade energy. Lightning surge where while sliding, activate your charge melee ability to blink forward a cooldown art lightning strike. A fast of command where freezing or suppressing a target reloads your equipped weapon and provides a increased weapon stability, aim assist, and airborne effectiveness. It will also create status shards of void breach. A fast of protection where while surrounded you're more resistant to incoming attacks. A fast of ruin which increases the size and damage of the burst when you shatter a stasis crystal or frozen target and also increases the solar ignition radius. Facet of Balance where rapidly defeating light targets grants melee energy. Rapidly defeating dark targets grants grenade energy. And Facet of Defiance where finishers create a detonation that either jolts, scorches, slow, severs, or makes targets volatile depending on the damage type super you have. As Fell Winter doesn't require a lot of fragments to function, it does give you wiggle room to decide on a few fragments to change here and there. Having faster protection and defiance is a must as DC will heavily affect Fair Winter's effect. A faster balance is also another good one to have so we can rapidly regen our abilities there and then, while combining this with Ruin to expand our reaches more. And lastly, a faster command may seem like a strange choice to pick, but actually works out really well with build as long as you have conditional on hand. Each time we trigger stasis or suppression, it will auto reload conditional here and there. This means if I shoot a target once with my weapon and then use my melee to debuff, I can get back my first two shots back to back. This means if I shoot a target once with my weapon and use my melee to debuff, I can get my first shot back two times. It's very underrated at the moment as we talk, but once you try this out with other weapons that can freeze, you will see the benefits it can have down the line. Also to note, you do need to have arcane needles equipped as this alone will grant you the 3 melee charges for the build. For the mods and stats, we have both resilience and discipline marked as our top priority as always, with strength also playing a part as well. The strength however will be useful in a different way as we play along. Resilience we have ours at tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. No key mods are needed for this area as having devour on hand will keep us alive and faster protection is also going to be useful. 
a discipline, we have our tier 10 for a 1 minute 1 second cooldown via cold snap grenade. The following grenade isn't required for the build, so you can use others, it's just easier to control and works well with facet of ruin. This area will most likely be aiding strength stat, since that's where the build excels the most in. So, having impact induction times 2 for a 17% cooldown, absolution for a 5% all ability cooldown, and distribution mod times 2 for a 6% all ability cooldown. A strength on the other hand is at tier 6 for a 1 minute 17 second cooldown. Although a low cooldown rate is applied, using Arcane Needle will grant you a times 3 midi charge to fully use however you like. This in many ways does allow you to avoid some of the higher costs when adding the following mods. I've decided that adding Momentum Transfer, which grants 12% ability energy, Outreach, which grants 5%, and maybe a weapon with Parkless on hand is enough for supporting this one star enough. Additional mods which are highly recommended, we do have the following. Having the Harmonic Siphon mod for producing orbs of power, and special to heavy finder mods, reserves, and scavenger ammo mods are highly recommended for the build, and how fast we can generally run our ammo with our main primary and heavier use. So as we have covered the main exotic we are using, I would then advise you to pick a super weapon for the build. These are optional of course, but it's still very important to take a note of the choices being used. Having the No Survivors SMG is highly recommended for covering both Discipline and Strength side of things via Demolitioners and Pugilists. With these in hand, I will be gaining a small amount of energy back to keep myself and my build afloat. At the same time, since melee is the more important stat here, any weapon that can get the Pugilists on hand will be greatly rewarded down the line. Having recurrent impact with Frenzy and Substance is a nice combo to use when you want to let loose and deal massive damage. With a higher RPM than most weapons, and a frankly larger ammo and reserve to support it, this is going to be useful for taking out multiple enemies and bosses all in one magazine. At the same time, it also comes with the land tank frame perk that grants a 10 resilience and 5% damage reduction upon kills made. So for this sort of build being up close and personal, it does work out really well for the users. The big notion about using Felwinder's Helm is the capability of locking down large swords of areas easily with one mini boss finisher. Now this won't always be the case with most enemies available, but when you do get the opportunity to do so, the effects are noticeable and quite profoundly impactful for everyone involved. In fact, I was very much surprised not to see this sort of build with Felwinder's Helm applied being used for the raid race, as it does make crowd control easier to manage. This is why this setup in particular is going to be very special for not only general ad clearing mob control, but also the new and old raids available. The option to use Fell Winters and Lightning Search has always been there as an option to use, but felt weak in comparison to our prismatic version. Our version now allows us to pop off three lightning power attacks, one after another, which can then lead to a finisher for even more destruction on hand. We then have this effect our fragments as well, where faster command will regen our ammo back to back for near and limited uptime, and then lastly, it just stays unique compared to everything else we see. What's not to love about this build? Except for its charged melee attack falling apart if used in the wrong area at the wrong time, or enemies being way more tanky than normal to follow through. But outside of that, which can be easily recovered, the build in my eyes does everything I've wanted Felwinters to achieve, a mob with the flexibility now available via Prismatic Warlock class. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below. While if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub while we're here. Dim link is located below in the pinned section, and I do advise you to check out my other playlist for more. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.